Welcome to Focus on Suppliers. I'm Leela Davidson. And I'm Jared Davis. Two quick things. Number one, Miss Leela, welcome to Focus on Suppliers. So great to have you here as co-host. Thank you. And number two, do you like back to school? I love it. You like this time of year? Absolutely love I it. I loathe it. Don't like it at all. I still get that anxiety like I was in third grade. You know who is going back to school this season, though? It's Walmart Suppliers with the new shelf-ready or retail-ready packaging initiative. You had a great conversation with Bic about this, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that's right. It was really interesting to learn how suppliers Suppliers are responding to the mandate. It was neat also to talk with Mr. Kerry Bailey from Menasha. He's going to be in this week to talk to us about how he's been helping suppliers get ready for back to school and what we can expect going forward into 2018. And finally, we have Don Harris with the Heart of Business, and he is going to talk to us about one of my favorite organizations in town, which is Dress for Success, to some wonderful things for women in advancing their careers. It's going to be a great back to school show. Focus on suppliers starts now. Focus on Suppliers, brought to you by 8th and Walton, where suppliers learn fast and grow, and sponsored in part by Saatchi and Saatchi X, Case Stack, and other outstanding companies. Back to school shopping for supplies means BIC, and going down that back to school aisle and just having so much fun shopping and seeing what's new this year. I know that's what I do. I bet that's what you do too. We are here with Kyle Williams today. He is the national account manager for BIC for the Walmart business. Kyle, thanks for being here. And I just want to dive right into retail ready packaging because that's very important, but tell us why. Absolutely, thank you for having me, of course. Um, so retail ready packaging, uh, is a way for the in-store Walmart worker uh, to save time and then create efficiencies. Um, and just to give an example, um, let's say you were packing out a shelf and then you had one pack and then you had to pack this one, sh one out multiple times onto a peg, multiply that times 100, 200, 300 items, you can see how long that could potentially take as opposed to having one retail-ready package or one retail-ready tray that you put into its place it's there, it's ready, and then you move on from there. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to create um, efficiencies within stocks, and that's going to create a much better customer experience. And with all of that, that should hopefully generate additional sales, both for the vendor and, of course, for Walmart. Yeah, very important, especially at back-to-school time. Absolutely. Sounds like an innovation um, kind of on the logistical side. What about innovations for the shopper? Yeah, great question. Um, so. We really try to focus on two things when, when it comes to innovation. One, we always want to make sure the user has a fantastic writing experience, and then we want to make sure we're on trend. Uh, and that can come in many different forms. Um, that can be vibrant colors, quick drying ink, very dark lead, or even large erasers. Uh, and I, I've got a couple examples for you here. So what we have here is our new Gelocity quick dry line. Uh, this does have three times, this has ink that dries three times faster uh, when compared to other Bic gel pens. Um, has a full barrel grip and then of course is available at Walmart. But most importantly, uh, this has a premium writing experience but it's going to have a, a value at the shelf. And that's really what you come to know and love about the big brands. Um, in addition, we have our new Velocity Max mechanical pencil line. Um, this one's fun because it's got a very large rubber grip. It's got a, a huge eraser, about 75% bigger than our Velocity original line. Uh, and again, available at Walmart right now. Yeah, that's really cool. I like the big eraser. I make a lot of mistakes, and so I think that's important. Yep. Uh, I noticed some really interesting colors here, too, and any, um, any product that has anything to do with any kind of fashion, I feel like color is always super important. So how do you guys keep up with that? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, colors is one of the most important trends in writing right now. And what we're seeing is um, each user really wants to create their own writing experience and, and make it unique, make it their own, either through everyday writing or potentially coloring as well. So this can be applicable to both um, children and adults. Yeah, and I bet it's tough to keep up with the, the color trends. And what are some other trends that you're seeing then in this category? So right now we're at back to school, as you know. And at back to school, we're seeing a few interesting trends, one of which is um, 
despite the fact that e-commerce is continuing to grow, um, we are seeing, believe it or not, 94% of sales still being done at brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. um, another interesting trend is um, we're seeing that consumers are telling us through our studies that they're willing to spend uh, at a bare minimum as much as they did last year or potentially more at back to school. And third, uh, we're seeing that tax-free weekends, depending on if your state has it or not, um, is an absolute needle mover uh, in terms of sales for the state. So these, these are three you know, are, really strong trends. Yeah, really positive trends for the category. I love that. Absolutely. I love to hear that. So connecting with your shopper, uh, you touched a little bit on the, whole, the Omni experience. People are shopping on .com. They're also shopping in store. How are you connecting with those shoppers? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there, there's multiple ways, of course, uh, in, in this new digital age. And, and a few of the ways we're doing is through our social media campaigns. So that, again, that could be on our Instagram page, our Facebook page, or even through comments if you purchase something on walmart.com. Uh, additionally, we like to connect with our consumers locally with some of our charity work. Um, one of the things we do here in Bentonville is the Fill the Bus charity. And what that is, is a partnership between the United Way, BIC, Walmart, and multiple other vendors to essentially fill a school bus at multiple super centers uh, with stationary products, not just writing, but multiple products, books, backpacks, et cetera, to get kids in need uh, locally back to school items before they go back to school. That's a fantastic effort, and I'm, we certainly appreciate it, Kyle. And thanks for being here today. Thank you. There's always something new in the aisles back to school time, and it's not necessarily the product, but the way the product is presented. And our old friend Carrie Bailey from Menasha is back to tell us how things are being presented this year, back to school 2017. Always great to see you, Carrie. Thank you. Good to see you. You've been working with Walmart suppliers on the whole back to school preparation. What are you seeing changing for 2017? I think what's going to be very, very evident is how We've worked very hard, and Walmart's worked extremely hard in presenting a navigable platform for back to school for, for mom. The shopper is really going to get a good, clear definition of how to navigate uh, once they come in with their back to school list. And I think they're going to work extremely efficient in helping mom get in and out of the store, find those things that are on the list, recognize the value items. And, and pour through that in a very fast way. Part of that is something that you've been nice enough to share with us before, and that's the retail-ready or shelf-ready packaging that Walmart's rolling out. We had chatted a little bit about uh, the big stationary and office supplies PEG-3 right. initiative. As you've worked with Walmart suppliers on this, what lessons kind of come away that you could share with other suppliers as they prepare for the retail-ready revolution? I think the thing that, it, you know, it's fundamental. I think the things that uh, are usually the f last thing should be the first thing top of mind, and that is how visible is the product. Uh, we've learned a lot in exploration of what needs to be said on the front lip of the Retail Ready Package, how to help mom or the shopper identify what that item is, what the true value of it is, if it's on the list per se or not, and then just being able to have visibility. And I think as we look at things like that, the fundamental pieces are, can I see the item? What is that item? What's the value of the item? And, and is it match up to my list? And then I need to move to the next item. So navigation, again, is a key part of it. Back to school is always, they call it holiday two in the stores <laughs> because it's become such a big part of You of stole my line. I, I stole your line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you work so closely with the suppliers on this, and as they're, we're in the throes of 2017, as they're now beginning to prepare for back to school 2018. Right. What are some of the things that you can tell us about Walmart's plan for shelf ready packaging between now and 2018 back to school time? Yeah. Well, as we're sitting here taping, you know, we're a little bit on the front end of that curve. Mm -hmm. but uh, So there's some unveiling that's happening today. I think the learnings that we're going to see over this next four, six, eight weeks are going to be really key. I think suppliers today need to pay close attention to their metrics, uh, look at what items uh, performed well in that scenario. There's going to be an open dialogue about what items are challenged in this particular platform and what ones mm -hmm. aren't. Um, and then did those items hit the shopping list for the shopper 
were they able to identify that value and what choices did they make uh, in that process. But I believe that when we circle back with these suppliers in preparation for 2018, there's going to be those learnings of, was our product visible? Did we present the right value? Was there good recognition? How did we survive in the supply chain? What did we look like in the duration of the back to school season? Because it doesn't happen in one week. It's an extended period, four, six, eight. So I think how they survive in that and then look at the metrics of those individual items are going to be a, be a key part of the, of the learning. And then how we employ those packaging changes for the 2018 session uh, will be a result of those learnings. And I think it's going to be important that, that, that we all come to the table with something out of that. It's going to be exciting to see how the school season kind of ends out, how we prepare, and as uh, retail-ready packaging rolls on, it's going to be neat to watch this roll out. So we hope you come back and talk to us again. We will. Thank it's shaping so up to be a good one. It's going to be fun. Thanks again. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Don't miss our new fun podcast, the 8th and Walton Conference Call. While it is always important for retailers to have items in stock, back-to-school shoppers are particularly influenced by their confidence in whether a store will have these items available. For more retail tips, visit irriworldwide.com slash retail. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. All Estel Attorneys at Law. With seven offices nationwide, including Northwest Arkansas, we are a full-service business law firm assisting clients with their corporate, employment, and real estate legal needs. For more information, visit hallestel.com. Walmart announced new on-time and in-full deadlines for suppliers. Set yourself up for success and improve your OTIF score fast with 8th and Walton's OTIF training. Register today at 8th and slash OTIF. You know, back-to-school fashion goes well beyond apparel nowadays. Your gear needs to be trendy, your supplies need to look good, and nobody knows that better than my next guest, Ms. Suzanne McDool, is joining us from Studio C. Great to have you here, yeah, Suzanne. Thank you very much. So for back-to-school 2017, as far as the trends and all the excitement goes, what are you most excited about? Uh, you know, as a company, we're very excited. Um, a product for back to school is hitting the shelf right now. I'm going to go and, and review it right now uh -huh. at the store. Um, we're excited by innovation and functionality within our product and fashion on the floor right now. Uh, uh, we have an extreme binder line uh, at Walmart for back to school expanded. It's every day too, but it's at back to school and it has a one touch ring in it. So uh -huh. you just click it, it opens and it eliminates, you know, pinching the skin. Yes. Kids can easily move papers in and out and it's it's great it's a premium item at Walmart so there's so much fun and innovation going on right now with back to school and when you go down the aisles of Walmart what do you see is driving all that fun that we're seeing this year sure um, it's trends okay. and Walmart really has a good handle on the trends in the market we also have a good handle um, at Studio C and so we marry those we have a great collaborative relationship with the Walmart trend team and so we're able to bring fun exciting stuff like we have a notebook right now with the llama on it uh -huh. in tropical colors the corals a trending color mm -hmm. out there and so we're really marrying that relationship and we have a great great product line at back to school right now what are you seeing that is the most different about back to school this year versus what we've seen in the past um it's it's um it's really like i said it's on trend it's been on trend before but they've got it really streamlined this year it, there's innovative uh products on the back to school shelves like our binders there's smart journals and so it's really um, making sure they uh, have that uh, customers uh, meeting that customers needs which I think Walmart does and we try to at Studio C also and I know one thing Studio C is doing and with in partnership with Walmart is some of the retail ready or shelf yes. ready packaging which yes. is very innovative so what are you seeing along that line and how are you preparing for back to school in years to come sure well right now uh, our, our shelf ready PDQ is it eliminates a carton so it makes Walmart and Studio C a sustainable which is extremely important
important. It helps the associate at store level and um, it eliminates box knives. It's a perfed edge so they just tear it out, they take the top off and they put it on shelf. And so it helps the customer because the product becomes more shoppable. Yeah, it's going to save a lot of money on payroll dollars it's, and you can yeah. pass that along to your customers yeah. as well. Yep. Yeah. Very efficient. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I appreciate you being here so much Suzanne. Yeah. Thank you for this eye-opening experience on Back to School. Yeah, no, thank you. It's important to know your shopper, especially this time of year, back to school, and that's why I'm so glad to have our next guest. You have seen her on the show many times. We're glad to have her in the studio. It's Miss Jessica Hendricks, CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi X. Great to see you again, Jessica. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. This time of year, back to school, when I think of the back to school shopper, I think of two people. I think of me in grade school with all the anxiety when I see the back to school signs in stores, and then I think of my mom with all that relief on her face. Now, in your business, how do you see the back to school shopper and how suppliers can prepare? Mm -hmm. Well, very similar to your experience. So what we know about the shopper is that this is kind of a, a, a time of year where she is really struggling with, I've got to get my kids ready, and yet I'm really excited about the fact that I'm going to be able to have a little bit more time to work on maybe some house projects and or really, you know, take a little bit more time for myself. But what's most important is, is getting her child ready for school. What we see is this huge opportunity for retailers and suppliers as they help their retailer partners to really think about how mom is thinking about shopping and dad, um, um, for that matter, uh, which is really about... She She's looking at it as I want to be efficient in my shopping experience and that might connect me to grocery pickup, it might pick, connect me to dot com purchases, but she's also thinking about experience and experience might look like a couple of things. It might look like you've created this great way for me when I come into the store to know exactly what I need to purchase for my child's school and my child's grade. It might also look like experience as I want to start to experience what I'm going to do for my home, for myself, once I get my kids back off to school. And so as we think about shopping, it's really through how can I be efficient for my shopper and then how can I use that time that she earns back in the day by being efficient to create these really great experiences for her that allow her to either do something again for herself or for her home. And that extra time that she has mm -hmm. back during the day, that kind of feeds into the next question because mm -hmm. we talk about suppliers that may not necessarily be back to school suppliers mm -hmm. or think about that, but you have this whole uh, extra time that mm -hmm. is now on her hands that they can be part of. How does that supplier that doesn't normally think about being part of the back to school program utilize that opportunity? Well, I think you're probably going to have to be very cognizant of the in-store space and I would even say the online um, experience and the, and the dot-com shelf and really think about what are those um, communication items that I can use, whether that's an in-store display or, again, something online, that's going to trigger her to either come back when she's gotten those kind of back-to-school items off of her list or that she's going to be willing to, to connect and engage in quickly in store. So I think you've got to accept that you may not be able to get the, the massive display or the massive um, communication space online that you've expected, um, but you can still make some connections and you can still have some really, really unique um, emotional connection talking points to mom um, and really to anyone who's kind of in that, that different modality, either in store or online. And then Sachi and Sachi X recently participated with Quaker in a great program mm -hmm. or kind of revolved around around back to school. Tell us a little bit about that. Yep. It's actually a couple of years ago, but I think the insight remains the same, which is as mom prepares and she gets ready to go back to school, she's really thinking about how are my kids going to be most successful? Well, I have a five and a seven-year-old, and uh, two fun periods in my house are uh, around 10 o'clock in the morning and three o'clock in the afternoon when my kids get really hungry. So what we did is we tapped into that mom insight, that shopper insight, and said, we're going to actually talk to her about this occasion and provide her with some healthy, healthy snack options that are going to allow her to feel like she's meeting her child's unmet need. Because she knows if that meat isn't net, that, that they're going to either not do well in their, in their classroom or they're not going to have a great recess or, um, quite frankly, it might impact their whole rest of their day. So we actually created an entire program that was about hey, here's how you can help your child snack healthy at this time. And then we also combined it with a, a back-to-school learning and reading program um, within the community. We appreciate your time, Jessica. Thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. And we'll be right back. Suppliers, get the latest retail news 24-7 at Walmart News Now. What if you created a town today? What would that town stand for? What matters and what would stand out? And where would you find this new town? Bentonville, Arkansas. Visit Bentonville, a new American town. 
Join Ethan Walton and the March of Dimes on October 12th for a night of fabulous food and good company. The Signature Chefs Auction brings Northwest Arkansas's top chefs together in support of babies. For more information, go to SignatureChefs.org. Hey, suppliers, are you feeling confused? Does Retail Link have you a little frustrated? Or does your tight deadline get you stressed? Well, good news. You can get retail questions answered fast. In fact, you could do it right now. Eighth and Walton Merchant Advisors are standing by to help you. It's all from your keyboard or your phone. Chat now at eighthandwalton.com slash chat or call 479-715-6700. When a supplier decides to go omni-channel, normally what that means is success from a brick-and-mortar store to successful sales online. But what's interesting is when a successful supplier online makes the jump back to brick-and-mortar, and that's the story of OFM. Bob Poe from OFM is here to tell us a little bit about their journey. Great to have you here, Bob. Thanks for having me. Tell us about OFM. Sure. OFM is a manufacturer supplier of office furniture focusing on the education, healthcare, and hospitality markets. So as you're partnering with a retailer, how do you determine what items are going to work in the store? Well, you look first at you know, what's our strongest sellers online. What are those items that are going to be in high demand? Uh, working with our buyer or our category manager, identifying what's going to be that right product that could create that, that omni-channel lift for us. Also, you're going to look at uh, what are those particular products that would be um, uh, a, a, a gap in their selection, understanding that a, a brick-and-mortar retailer would have uh, a challenge on the floor space. You know, we're going to have to maximize what product we're going to be able to put out there. And for us, uh, it's going to be a very highly targeted item that we want to put out there. Now, every supplier that's online is so focused on online content and improving that customer mm -hmm. experience as they're sitting there browsing the site. Tell right. us about your online content and how you direct it to the furniture shopper. Sure. So content online is a challenge for every retailer, every manufacturer, every supplier. That is something that I don't think that will ever end. It's we're going to getting the most relevant content to the customer to get them to make the decision to purchase. Uh, for us, we, we invest heavily in uh, dynamic content, either through video, uh, uh, 360 spin images. We have an in-house uh, studio that takes care of this type of uh, content and constantly produces videos, images around every single item that we have. Um, also, you're looking at with, a, with optimized content, um, making sure that everything that we put out there is relevant and is correct. That is also can be a challenge, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, the, the right specs, everything that we have to put out there so when a customer is ready to make a purchase, they feel comfortable about what they're buying. And with back to school time, how's the relationship with Walmart been, particularly with site to store? Absolutely. That is something that we have taken advantage of over the past couple of years. Um, we are very strong in our own uh, drop ship distribution model to the customer. This is something that was a little new for us. Uh, but what we have seen is that with a uh, sending a product to the Walmart site to store, that customer service, uh, customer satisfaction has gone up, um, that we um, the customer definitely feels good about when they are ready to pick up a product that if they're if they're damaged, is there something wrong with the package, that they have someone right there, especially with the back to college uh, format that we see that that is strong within that uh, within that that dynamic. All right, great information. Bob, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me. Hi, and welcome to the Heart of Business in Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Don Harris, and today we've got a repeat guest. It's Virginia German with the Dress for Success Northwest Arkansas. You're the executive director. Good to see you again, Virginia. Good to see you. And we've got Latrice Watkins, who I'm particularly glad to see. She's a Walmart executive. She's a senior vice president in the consumables area for Walmart, which is an area I had, I had some hand in back in the day. But most importantly, it's great to see our leadership involved in nonprofits, in Walmart leadership. We know our suppliers are, are involved. It's just wonderful to see you be part of this. So welcome. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You're coming up on an anniversary, I hear. We are. Four years. In August, uh, this month, we'll be uh, in Northwest Arkansas for four years. And what's growth look like during that four years? How, what kind of change have you seen? 
Well, we have served over 845 women and we have expanded our footprint. We, are now, we now have a second boutique in Springdale. So now women in Washington County can uh, receive our service, has better access to our services. Well, that's wonderful. So growing, growing, growing over those yes. four years. That's right. Now, how do the clients get to you, Virginia? How do they get part of your program? Sure, they are referred to us uh, by our partners. So we have Goodwill Career Services, all of the women shelters in the area, NWAC, um, Workforce. When a woman is seeking a job, she has to be job ready, uh, then they refer her to us and we uh, will set an appointment with her and suit her and help her with her resumes and basically help her throughout her career if she'd like. So. Way more than just learning how to dress, it's That's learning right. how to be ready to go get a job in this professional environment we have here in Northwest Arkansas, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. That's right, and to retain a job, retain Ret a job and grow their careers. Great point. Yep. And Latrice, as part of your engagement, you are the co-chair of the Fundraiser is getting ready to happen. Tell us about that. It's called the Little Black Dress Dinner Party. Okay. Which is really exciting, and who doesn't want to wear a little black dress? <laughs> <laughs> it's October 5th, and we're going to have it at the I Street Ballroom. Um, it is a culinary event, so okay. for foodies, um, there will be chefs from all over Northwest Arkansas. Yum. Arkansas. Yum <laughs> is right. Um, I attended last year, and it mm -hmm. was full. Um, and I think from what I understand, it filled up pretty fast. Yes, it does. And so we've increased the number of chefs this year. So we'll have 24, but people shouldn't wait to get their tickets. Better hurry now. Right. Sounds like a yummy event for sure. Mm -hmm. It is. And the, the really cool thing is the people that it benefits. And so that's why I'm excited to participate. That's what it's all about. And it takes money to run a nonprofit. It does. It takes more than money, though. You've got more needs than that. Tell us about what your biggest needs are right now from the community. Right now, we need volunteers. Since yeah. we've opened our second boutique, we really need more image consultants and career services volunteers, people that engage with the women, our, our clients. So that's what we need most. Well, I'll bet you between the event and this broadcast, there's plenty of people that can get involved to help these ladies get on the right career path. It's just mm -hmm. wonderful what you're doing. We thank you for that thank and you. appreciate your time today. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Heart of Business on Northwest Arkansas. We'll see you next time. Here at Ethan Walton, it is a lot of fun to bring you focus on suppliers each week, but the most fun we have is getting to see our suppliers grow through our classes. And here to tell us more about that is our president and CEO, Mr. Jeff Clapper. Great to have you here again, sir. Thank you for having me, Jared. We get this question all the time. Why would I need to take a retail link class in the first place when the information is already in retailing? Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> you don't. Oh. is the short answer. I mean, it <laughs> saves it, me a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a short interview. No, no. I mean, the, the, the fact of it is exactly like you said. The content is there, the information is there, and there are a lot of people who know Retailink already. So there are all kinds of ways that you could learn this on your own. But the reason so many suppliers come to us for training is to save time and costly mistakes. And to give you, you know, a simple example, if a company is new to working with Walmart, they only have a month or two before their buyer is already starting to review the mod that's a few months down the road. Mm -hmm. And, and in, that, in that time span, they need to hit the ground running and be showing great success in time and, and, and ahead of that review. So suppliers come to us to shorten the learning curve, to jump ahead in the learning curve rather than figuring it out on their own. They're smart enough to do it. They're smart enough to figure it out and use all those resources, but it's a matter of making that happen quickly and with as few or as you know, no mistakes really happening. And so that's why they count on us for the training. And as you're talking with suppliers and your experience, why do they keep coming back to Ape and Walton for more training? Yeah. Well, besides all the fun we yeah, have. Of course, here, yeah. <laughs> you know, actually it's 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 really about the team. We have a, a knowledgeable team of people who've come out of Walmart many years of, of time and, and uh, you know professional experience at Walmart supporting buyers, uh, seeing all of the ups and downs that a supplier might go through the challenges, the you know the best practices and the worst practices, and knowing what the buyers want. Um, so being able to teach those things, we are also just collectively as a team, aggressively students of the business, knowing the very latest uh, and knowing what suppliers need to know, and 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 also just having taught so many suppliers over the years, um, we we see even more of those challenges. So it's just sort of that collective knowledge that we gain, and 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 then just sort of thrive on helping the suppliers learn those things together. So that's my my quick answer on why. <laughs> Always great to talk to you, Jeff. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks, Jared. Connect with us online. Follow Ethan Walton on Facebook. Get retail questions answered fast. Ethan Walton Merchant Advisors are standing by to help you. Chat now at ethanwalton.com slash chat. Our guests enjoy staying at the 21C Museum Hotel and hosting dinner, meetings, and product launches there. 
Okay, so I feel a little bit better about back to school, not so much anxiety. Now that I know the suppliers are in great hands with the retail ready or shelf ready packaging. But you know what's kind of a light bulb for me? I was unaware of how much fashion goes into just the school supplies. You didn't realize that? No, ma'am. Oh, well, I mean, you're shopping for your clothes, your supplies, you want to look good when you go back to school, right? Well, the supplies, that was news to me. Okay, so like when you're going back to school and you were shopping for yourself, what did you have to have? What was in fashion? When I was shopping for myself or mm -hmm. when I was younger. When you were younger, like, shopping um, for yourself, you know, going unicorns back to school. Unicorns and rainbows, I wanted. Uh, okay, see, for me it was just Evil Knievel. Does that date me a little bit? I don't even know who that is. The, well, I'm going to take back what I said about welcoming you to the show, <laughs> but I am not going to take back the fact that you, back to school really kicks off the holiday season when you think about it. It touches so many departments, big shopping, great time. It does, and the holiday season is nothing without giving. We always learn from Don Harris. We are reminded that every season is a season of giving.